أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وأشهد ألا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Alhamdulillah, once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the opportunity of coming out here and offering our Juma Salah. Few announcements before the khutbah. One is that our madrasa will be open tomorrow and parents try and make an effort to send your kids to the madrasa. There is a sister training program which will be held on tomorrow, 7th of April from 2 p.m. to 7, inshallah. Also, the brothers are invited for a special presentation that is Saturday night, and there will be dinner, inshallah. Also, we have a fundraising dinner for the Yemenis uh, brothers and sisters on Saturday. 14th of April from 7 p.m. So, so far, my dear brothers and sisters, we have made collection for the Yemeni, for the Yemenis, and the, so far we have collected um, $2,240 donation. So you can make your donations online. Uh, and uh, the, at the Masjid, what? website masjid our masjid website inshallah also we have our annual blood arm drive which is on sunday april 15 from 10 a.m to 4 p.m brothers could sign up also we are making early brothers and sisters the month of ramadan we have about approximately 40 days again for the month of ramadan and here we are uh, Asking brothers, whosoever want to um, do after dinner, then please contact uh, me or brother Musa, inshallah. Make an early booking, inshallah. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, we should take note. The month of uh, Rajab is coming to an end, and also the month of Shaban will be here before we know it. So please, in these months, try and do as much good deeds. Also, your dua is very important. We make dua for all our brothers and sisters who have passed away. We make duas for our parents and for our children and all those brothers who are sick and suffering. Brothers and sisters who are sick and suffering, we make dua and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them and give them speedy recovery, inshallah. Also, we have um, news, our Muslim, one of his nephew is in a serious accident and he is also asking for our dua. Inshallah, today, our khati will be Imam Said and he will lead us uh, into the salah and khutbah, inshallah. Brother Said. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, brothers, if you can come up a little bit and close the gaps in front of you so that those who come later on, they can have some space at the back. So, especially the young brothers, please come up the walls and come forward a little bit, inshallah. Zakhla khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad. Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayyala Salah Hayyala 
الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يدل الله فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا إنه أصلك الكلام كلام الله إلى حد حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في البرعة وكل برعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا دخلوا في السلم كافة ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لقوم عدو مبين صدق الله العظيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى My dear brothers and sisters in Islam We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send our best praises upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our salam and salutations Our praise upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Upon his family, upon his sahabas The righteous people of the past And all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time My dear brothers and sisters The days are coming closer, the days are decreasing Towards the month of Ramadan the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us to open his doors of mercy. The month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chained the devil. And the, the, the month that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has closed the doors of Jahannam. My dear brothers and sisters, these are the days in which we should utilize to prepare ourselves. To prepare ourselves to benefit the most from this blessed month of Ramadan. For none of us know if we'll even reach the month of Ramadan. And if by the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are to meet the month of Ramadan, none of us know if we'll ever see another one to come. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of our righteous people who have went before us, who came before us, they advised us. They said that we should utilize these months, especially the months of Rajab and Sha'aban, to prepare for the month of Ramadan. Among the great ni'mah of this month, as I mentioned before, is the salvation from the fire of hell. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a period of time where most Muslims, those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and even those who sometimes have weaknesses in their character, in their behavior, in their worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they look forward to benefit, to gain from this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be saved from the fire of Jahannam. My reminder today to each and every one of us would be about the inhabitants of Jahannam. This is a reflection for each and, each and every one of us so that we may look into ourselves first and foremost so that we may see if we have these characteristics. 
And if we do, we might try to change them. We might try to better ourselves. And if we don't, we might try to help those who have them so that by the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each and every one of us can be saved from the fire of hell. I mean, my dear brothers and sisters, hell, as we all know, it's a very, 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 very serious place at which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us this is a, man a manifestation of the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we all know, when shaitan promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will come to this world and every single person who tries to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he will come as a distraction to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, what? Allah said to him, then the fire of hell is for them. So hell is the place in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who turn away from the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who disbelieve in the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a punishment for his enemies. And who are the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Those who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who seek to not obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is definitely a prison for those who are the evildoers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us this dua, Rabbana innaka man tudkhil an-nar faqad akhzaita wa ma lil-zalimin lil-ansar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that to say our Lord, verily you admit to the fire indeed, you have disgraced him. Whomsoever is admitted into the fire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, faqad akhzaita. That person is definitely a disgraced person. Something that any one of us in this world, we try not to be. We try not to be disgraced. However, on the day of judgment, those who will enter into the fire of hell, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that they will be the ones who are disgraced. And subhanAllah, the beautiful thing is that some people, they will be in the fire of hell forever. And some people, they will be there temporarily. And for those people who are in there forever, there is no, there is no savior for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ لِلْأَنصَارِ And for those people who are doing evil, for those people who are consistent in evil, and we are speaking there, we are speaking here about those people both who are disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who believe in Allah but choose to be disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ لِلْأَنصَارِ Both in a literal sense of ظَالِمِينَ The people who are oppressors, oppressors upon other people. And those who oppress themselves and those who do wrong things. For on that day, there will be no help. My dear brothers and sisters, and even those, subhanAllah, who will be saved from the fire of hell, those who believe and who have iman and die in a state of iman, when they will be saved from the fire of hell, subhanAllah, in Jannah, they will be known as the miskeen of Jannah, the masakeen of Jannah, the poor people of Jannah, and they will have their mark in Jannah as to, so that we will know that they, will be, they were once the inhabitants of Jahannam. My dear brothers and sisters, the hell fire is something that we must always keep on our mind. We live in our society in which today our minds are taken away from the eventuality of heaven or, 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 or hell. We are only taught in our society, oh, everyone goes, to, everyone goes to heaven, everyone goes to Jannah. Seldom are we reminded about the reality of hell. In our world today, it is a joke. Oh, I'm going to hell, and we take it as that. We take it as a joke, I'll see you in hell. And it's a common thing to say. Why? Because we lack the understanding of the reality of hell. We lack the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we do not try to be reminded, nor do we remind others about the reality of the fire of hell. So the people who will be in the fire of hell, these are the people that we should definitely try not to die in a state of. And those are the people who are the disbelievers. Those are the people whom even after Hidayah came to them, come to them. And those who hear the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and choose to worship something else or choose not to worship anything at all. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, our society is slowly becoming like that. It is more difficult today to give da'wah than it was before. Because darkness, misguidance has become such an attractive thing. None of us know, none of us know whether we will die in a state of Iman. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned to us in a hadith, 
He said that the person who is destined to go into the fire of hell, he might do the deeds of the people of Jannah his entire life. Until just before he die, Qadr will take place. And the Qadr of Allah, he will die in a state of misguidance. None of us want to be in such a state. We, sh we cannot take the state of being in which we are now to be complacent about it, to get comfortable with it. Shaitan wants us, wants us to be comfortable. Because when we are comfortable, we will no longer strive to get better. And when we no longer strive to get better, then there's only one direction in which we will go, and that's downhill. My dear brothers and sisters, the fire of hell, for those who will be in there forever, and they will be receiving the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as the punishment will be given out to them, they will call for the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the reply will never come to them. Eventually, when it comes to them, it will be said to them, there is no help for you and you will be in there forever. Can you try to imagine eternity? Can you try to imagine anything in eternity? Subhanallah. The scholars of Islam, they, 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 they narrate to us or they, they try to explain eternity to us in relation to Jannah. They said that every second of our life that we live in this, on the face of this world is like precious jewels falling from the sky. And they said that every second in this world that we wasted, or every second that we do not benefit from, it's like thousands and thousands of the years in the hereafter which we have lost. We cannot put an equality to eternity, even a second from eternity, my dear brothers and sisters. Can we imagine being in a place of utmost torment in which every single day, every time that goes by, it only gets worse and worse and worse, and there's no better to come for that. Just the thought of it for those with taqwa, it will shall send a shiver down our spines, my dear brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described to us about the people of Jahannam over and over and over. And every one of us know about the kuffar, the disbelievers, they will be in the fire of hell. Let us not forget those who call to the people of the fire of hell. They will also be among the inhabitants of the fire of hell forever. These are the people who follow misguided beliefs and ideologies that contradict the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who believe in their false causes, the causes that are not towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is especially for our young folks today. Very easily can we get caught up in many things. Many things that call us away, that call us away from directing and devoting our life to one cause and that is the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of my teachers, he used to say to me, he used to say that if there is no benefit for you in something, don't do it. And where is the benefit in terms of getting you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look at anything that you are going to do. Anything whatsoever, no matter how insignificant it might seem. And if it is not something that will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's a waste of time. Don't do it. Leave it off. Because shaitan, shaitan will want us to get caught up in something. Shaitan will want us to get caught up in something that is of no benefit to us so that we may devote our time to it so that we have little or no time to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan is very wise. He knows the human being. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to be careful of this. Not everything that is there to do we must get involved in. Let us carefully examine every single thing. Let us not call to those, let us not call to those who are in contradiction to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us hold on to this deen of Allah. Instead, call to those who are calling to our, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us call to follow in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us not abandon this deen. Let us not abandon this religion. Then there will be those people who are believers, but they will be in the fire of hell. And what are some of the characteristics? And this is for us, my dear brothers and sisters. These characteristics are for each and every one of us. Because if we, if we do not know, then we find ourselves in these categories that we don't know. Subhanallah. We don't know whether the mercy of Allah will be on us on the day of judgment. And what are the characteristics of those who will be in the fire of hell? Imam Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he was once asked about this. And he gave a list all based on a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, first and foremost, 
The people in the fire of hell are those who associate partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's clearly stated. This believing in the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are some people today who testify la ilaha illallah, but they deny the existence or the reality or the truth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he is the last and final messenger. And any person who deny this, then they aren't a Muslim. Any person who deny that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger, then they aren't a Muslim. Because this is one of the prerequisites of faith. This is one of the prerequisites of the shahada. And for us to deny this, make us a disbeliever. And subhanallah, my dear brothers and sisters, some of us might not know this, but they are Muslims today. Or people who claim to be Muslims, who claim are the prophets after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who claim the, the illegitimacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who claim that he is not the legitimate prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they call themselves Muslims. My dear brothers and sisters, let, not, let us not get caught up in that. They aren't Muslims, and let us keep far, far away from anyone who calls to such. Kufr. These are people who show ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kufr, the word kafara, means, literally means those who are ungrateful. The word kafara literally means those who are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and definitely the one who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is, who is filled with envy, hasad, you know. Envy is subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that envy, right, it burns away iman like fire burns away wood. When we are jealous of another person, we go to many lengths to be harmful to them. In ways that subhanallah, we do not even think that we are jealous of the person. You know, a person might not ever do anything to us, but we just hate them for no reason. Our own Muslim brothers and sisters we treat in such a way. All right? And we, and we try not to see the good in them, rather we see the bad in them. Or we try to find something bad in them. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran, Surah Al-Falaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us and is teaching us to seek protection from envy and from those who are envious of us. Because evil eye, my dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who don't know, it is something real in Islam, and it's something that we must seek protection from. My dear brothers and sisters, this list goes on. It mentions about promiscuity and immorality. It mentions about all of those bad things or immoral activities that which each and every one of us know. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has blessed each and every one of us with an inner state, with an inner, with an inner moral compass that is sometimes called the fitrah. All right? The fitrah guides us to that which is evil, guides us away from that which is evil and to that which is true. And if the fitrah is pure, then more are we guided to that which is pure, and less are we guided to that which is evil. But when we corrupt our fitrah, which means when we involve in more and more evil actions, when we involve more and more in backbiting and slandering and vain speech and gambling and using of riba and drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes and insulting people, it corrupts our fitrah. It makes us more easily influenced by the devil, by shaitan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, in every single human being, there are two jinns. And I'm paraphrasing here, the good and the evil jinn. The good jinn is there to encourage us to do that which is good. The evil jinn is there to encourage us to do that which is bad. And every time we do something that which is bad, we are, it becomes, the, the evil jinn, it be, its influence becomes stronger on us. It is why the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and all of the righteous people, they spent so many hours, so many books, so many guidance, so many advices to tell us to keep away from wrong things. My dear brothers and sisters, the road to the fire of Jahannam is a very easy road. It's not a difficult one. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the Jahannam to the angels, and, they, uh, and Allah, they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone will come to Jahannam. Why? Because it is so easy. It is so easy for us to do that which is bad. Our soul, today everyone is fighting for freedom. I want freedom to do this. I want freedom to do that. And as we are coming along, as the days goes by, our older folks, they can tell you of this. As days goes by, immorality is becoming more rampant. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in a hadith, he said he saw from among the inhabitants of Jannah two kinds of people in which he didn't see as yet. And among them are those people who are dressed, yet they are still naked. They are fully clothed, yet they are still naked. 
Let us examine our society today and see how rampant this is becoming. Our brothers, our sisters more so, they are fully clothed from head to toe covered with pieces of cloth. Yet it, it is as though they wear nothing. And this is something that is perpetuated in our society. This is something that which is spreading in our society. Remember, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited riba, interest. And subhanAllah, today we are finding so much avenues. Muslims are seeking avenues in which we could say that this is okay for us to do. Rather than finding an alternative to it. My dear brothers and sisters, being an inhabitant of Jannah is being someone who is disregarding and not making the effort to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end of the day, that's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us his legislations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us his commandments. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have set forth for us the perfect way. And if we think that is not the perfect way, then we are not true believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we will have weaknesses. Yes, we will commit to sin. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us what? That every single child of Adam is a sinner. But the best of sinners are those who return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek tawbah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to protect ourselves from the fire of Jahannam? Yes, we, can, we know all that which is bad. Every single sane person. You ask them when something is bad, they can tell you something when it is wrong, when it is against Islam. But we must strive to become strong people in our heart, to put iman in our heart. Because without iman, without the strength, without the willpower, without the constant struggle, then we will just go with the flow. And my dear brothers and sisters, most people will be in the fire of Jahannam. Most people will be in the fire of Jahannam. And that's a sad reality. Ask ourselves, am I preparing myself to be safeguarded from the fire of Jahannam? Let me look at myself. How much am I trying to change myself? to be like the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because from among the people who will be in the fire of hell are those who follow other paths other than the path of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we do not want to hear, oh, this is the way of Rasulullah, this is the sunnah. Brother, is that compulsory? Subhanallah. A Muslim should never ask that question. When we are advised about something that which is good, we do it, especially when, especially when we are told this is from the way of Rasulullah and we seek the knowledge that this is from the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are always presented with two paths. A path, both of them might seem good. Let us always choose the better path. Let us always choose the better path. Because the other path will only keep us. We will always choose the weaker path and the weaker path and eventually we will end up among those who are the inhabitants of Jahannam. My reminder for myself and each and every one of us here today, after listing some of the characteristics of the people of Jahannam, let us all examine ourselves, see that which we have from envy and jealousy and hatred and backbiting and vain talk and slandering and immoral behavior, uh, alcohol consumption, riba usage, and all of that which is prohibited. Let us examine our lives. Let us make a list of them. And let us start from today start to eradicate one of them at least every single day in our life or let us set a plan let us start planning to be righteous servants of allah we plan for everything else we plan for our business we plan for our life we plan for our studies we plan for everything let us start planning for the jannah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us start planning for standing in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that on the day of qiyamah when we stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be among those who are saved from the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the quran the ways in which we could seek protection from the fire of hell and from in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us the dua bismillahir rahmanir rahim rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batilan subhanaka faqina adhab an-nar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to say our lord for you have you have created all of this to glorify you give us salvation from the torment of the fire of hell allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also taught us rabbana innaka man tudkhil an-nar faqad akhzaita wa ma lil-zalimin min ansar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also taught us rabbana innana sami'na munadiyan yunadi lil-iman an aminu bi rabbikum fa amanna allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to say our lord we have heard the call of the one calling us to faith 
believe in your Rabb and we have believed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues Rabbana faghfir lana zunubana wa kaffir anna sayyiatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us to call upon him to say our Lord forgive us our sins and blot out our inequities and take to yourself our souls in the company of the righteous my dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us the way of salvation from the fire of hell. Let us seek it. Let us learn dua. Let us make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That night he said that the weapon of the believer is dua. Dua is the weapon of the believer. Let us use it. We can pray our salah, pray our salah on time. It's one of the way of the salvation from the fire of hell. Fasting regularly, especially in these days of Rajab and Sha'aban, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast in these days more than any other month. My dear brothers and sisters, let us start. Mondays and Thursdays, sunnah fast. Then there are the white days, the middle days of the month. My dear brothers and sisters, there's so much good for us to do. Let us try today. Let us try today. Let us learn one dua today and let us try to eradicate one bad habit. And verily by the name of Allah, step by step, we will achieve the mercy of Allah and achieve the Jannah of Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect each and every one of us from, the, from being the inhabitants of Jahannam. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to be from among those who are constantly in his remembrance. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akhiru da'wan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen, amma ba'ad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majeel. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majeel. اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر وبالعذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحيا ومماته من شر فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين والمجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم الإخوة اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا في سوريا وفي يمن وفي بورما وفي أفغانستان وفي العراق وفي فلسطين اللهم انصر الإسلام المسلمين والمجاهدين في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم اللهم اغفر لهم اللهم ارحمهم اللهم اغفر لنا اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يأمركم بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى اكبر واقيموا الصلاه ان الصلاه كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala falah, Qadu qam tis salah, Qadu qam tis salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Stawu wa a'tadilu ya rahmakum Allah, stand straight and before him, close the gaps in between the lines, stand close to each other as possible, my dear brothers, please close the gaps in between the lines. I maintain the straightness of the self throughout the entirety of the salah. Verily, the straightness of the self is part of the perfection and the completion of salah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 
صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاة ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يره الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah.